welcome to another episode of 90 Minutes of Wisdom, a channel dedicated to helping you expand your knowledge and develop a more successful and peaceful mind. My guest today is an expert of conscious feminine medicine, Ayurvedic health, and spiritual healing. Her focus is to arouse the feminine soul awake and help women remember the forgotten wisdom and beauty of their being. Plants are her greatest helpers, and she works in partnership with them. Please welcome to the show, the incredible Maria Carbonell. <laughs> welcome, Maria. Thank you so much, Andrew. So happy to be here with you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, thank you. Pleasure to see you again. <laughs> nice to see you. Uh, cool. Okay, so where to begin? Uh, why don't we start, jump right into it and talk about how you define conscious feminine medicine and what you do to, to help women. Yeah, um, it is the conscious feminine medicine is, you can take it as opposite of what the Western medicine is. It's about understanding <clears throat> what pain tells us. It is an understanding, understanding, tuning into our own intuition and inner wisdom, slowing down to hear that. And um, it is kind of the opposite of Western medicine where they say, let's take this organ out, let's take this out, let's cut this, let's, um, let's attack this, let's, let's fire this up and burn it, <laughs> you know, like cancers. So this is um, more of listening to the wisdom of our body and understanding back to the foundations of what our body is it's a natural self-healing mechanism and it's about what we've done to get in our way and how to get out of our way to let it self-regulate and heal itself mm, yeah i mean there's some you know um and we were talking about this before about kind of eastern and western medicine and how you know, it's to look at the whole body in, in one way, right? That's the ancient way in um, uh, Ayurvedic <laughs> medicine, as well as in uh, many Chinese practices. To, it's looking at the whole body instead of looking at that one part, right? And then in Western, like you said, it's like, okay, let's address that. There's a problem here. Let's pinpoint here. And how do we, you know, do our best to heal there? Not taking into account that whole view. So, yeah. yeah so tell me about like, that like so let's say someone when someone comes to you and they say um maria i'm i'm not feeling so well like so what what would you you know when they have you know some dif discomfort anxiety depression health issues what kind of like how do you look at it and how do you start your approach um when as an ayurvedic um practitioner i do look at what their predominant uh element is everybody has um, different quantities and qualities of, of the elements. And those are called doshas in Ayurveda. And we have certain tendencies. So I look at that predominant nature and their tendencies. And then that will give um, clues into uh, how they got to where they are and to help to unravel that. So it's really looking, them, looking at them as a whole person. They're, what's happening in the mind what's happening in their body, their emotions, and, and um, the recent past, and what it is that they want in the future. So it's really an approach of the whole person as a very complex being, and um, seeing really the whole picture of their energy right here, right now, and where it needs to be. <laughs> their energies have gotten spread out, um, spread out. You know, you as an energy worker, I also look at where energies are scattered in their life, where they're giving their energies up to and this could be diet lifestyle people circumstances and how to bring those energies back and that's healing mm -hmm. yeah okay cool yeah because there's yeah. you know there's certain things i look at sometimes with energies is like um very elderly people and kids right as two extremes uh -huh. so sometimes uh -huh. very elderly people um they similar to vampires they kind of draw your take your energy away right they kind of like you know it's true they love them but there's sometimes you know elderly people they kind of like just take take from you that energy feel that and mm -hmm. then i find children 
they have so much energy that they drain you because you just can't keep up, right? So they're all <laughs> like running around and they have got like 10 times, 100 times your energy level. So you yeah. start playing with a kid and then you're just like done. And the kid's just like, what do you mean? Like he's just <laughs> started, you know? So I find that's that's like one way of looking at energy. And then the other way I think, yeah. yes, there's there's um, chakras and blocks, right? In your, in your, in your energy, in your flow of your energy. So we see that with like, you know, thyroid problems or something, so this is a uh, block in the throat chakra, we're speaking your truth. Somebody that doesn't speak up and stuff like that will start having maybe issues here, right? Would you agree with that? That, that is so true because where there's pain and there's stagnation in our body, there's pain and stagnation in our life. And I know this because my throat chakra, um, me not speaking my truth for many, many, my whole lifetime up until, you know, recently, you know, recently it's a work in progress, but I've always had to work on my um, throat chakra as being deficient and then my heart chakra as excessive because I really have an open heart. I'm very open and I give too freely in that way. So um, yes, we do see it as if deficient or um, excessive. And um, the mother medicine also is all about our connection with mother earth and our connection with our own mother or the parental uh, that was or is our um, mother model. So this is all about healing the relationship with mother, mother nature and our own mother and how that really affects um, a lot of who we are, how we show up in the world um, and our physical body because it's all a relationship to ourselves and um, love. Love is, the big, love is the biggest healer. So it all goes back to love medicine, is really love medicine. Because it all goes back to love. Love is the highest octane fuel. We can fuel ourselves to know that we are the energy of love. And once we start operating from that level, then we'll know how we're more focused in life. We'll mm. know how to operate this organism of ours. Mm, yeah, well said. Yeah, very, <laughs> very, very cool. Very high vibration. And I think that I, I, I feel sometimes that especially pop music has really destroyed the word love, you know, the essence of like, we, it's kind of like we need a new word or something like that to really embrace, oh. right. Embrace what it is. Can we make it up right now? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be very, I would be very impressed. Yeah. We need, I remember many, many years ago, um, I was working at a music store, I was working at HMB music store. And if you typed in um, love into the search engine of the store, mm -hmm. it would crash the computer. <laughs> Because there's so many songs with love that you like, so that was like a, a, an error because it would just keep searching for uh -huh. songs that had the word love in it. And yeah. that's it. You're, 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 you have like two hours, you're just waiting. It's just couldn't process it. This was many, many years ago. Wow. So yeah, they, it would just, so it was like when you got hired, the first thing they would tell you was never type in love you know, <laughs> into, into this computer. <laughs> So, That's yeah. right, but then we do need to find a new word for love, or let's re reestablish our definition um, for love and put put in a that belief system. Like, let's go back to the basics and foundations. I always love to go back to being simple, and the simple definition of love is who we are. Is the greatest love. We are love vibration. <laughs> Even vibration has gotten a really like overused word, but. Um, Yes, if we can remember, it's all going back to our memory of who we are. And we are the energy of love. We are energy, we are energy of love. And, and love is the greatest healer. I've seen this in many lives, including my life, about love. Mm. Love in any form, beauty in any form, truth in any form. This is all the same thing. It's going back to love. Yeah, the way I define it, and it's very difficult to define, is that if you remove all the illusion of everything, destroy everything that we see with our eyes and everything, there's only one thing left, and it's love, right? <laughs> That's the only thing left. <laughs> if, if you destroy everything, everything that you can see and touch and feel and think you know, and just remove mm -hmm. everything, that's what you're left with. I love left. that. I love that. So yes, then then the romantic definition of love is gone. And all you have is a feeling. And I love how you said that, Andrew, because when you go into meditation and close your eyes, or you become still, or you sit under a tree, or with a rose, or with a plant, and all you feel is love, peace, love, 
and the, high, the highest vibration, and that is ourselves. And it is a feeling. Love is a feeling. Mm. You yeah. said it right on. Yeah, that's it. So look, we'll, we'll get back to it. You and I will work on a new word uh, for <laughs> love. <laughs> we'll try at some point uh, to, to brainstorm that. <laughs> um, you know, but uh, yeah, well said, Love well it. said. Mm -hmm. um, so why don't you tell me about, there's so many cool things I saw about you. I know that you lived in Santa Barbara before and now you live in, in, yeah. Tex in Texas. I used to go twice a year to Santa Barbara uh, for work. I used to work um, for Sonos, uh, the greatest wireless speaker. No way. Yeah, yeah. So I used to go twice a year. Um, I, I loved it. I love Santa Barbara. It's so it's so amazing. So like, the, the just the the architecture and the I mean we was the head office was right near the water so you could like overlook the water and just the, I know Sonos yeah and the founder John McFarlane oh oh yeah. do you do you oh, really wow yeah 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 he's yeah. a brilliant brilliant man so do you, do you know you know him personally I don't know him personally but he was you know you know when I was working at an environmental organization and my ex-husband worked at his software company open wave back then oh, okay um, I don't know if you know of open wave but um, um, software company that he started and founded and then the organization that I was he was um, one of the main um, guys there yeah he helped yeah yeah he's he, I, I had the chance to uh, to sit with him once it was like about 10, 12 of us and sat down and he, he would just, he just said, okay, just, uh, you know, he's, he's just such a humble guy, right? He's like, he he's like a billionaire and he's just most humble yeah. guy ever. And he's just, he just always dresses in a, you know, a t-shirt and jeans. Yeah. Jeans and a t-shirt. <laughs> you just would never, you just walk right by him. And he's just like, okay, he's just like, okay. Like just being really kind, really humble says, just ask us any, ask me anything, you know, just ask me, just ask me stuff. So he's just sitting on, he turns the chair around backwards and he's just like, he just asked, and he starts, people start asking him different questions. I never, I consider myself a very intelligent person. I never felt so like humbled and so, I, I, at the end of it, like each of his answers was like, if you would spend a week on one question and I would write it and edit it and show it to somebody and edit it again, that's how he spoke. It was like, it was mind blowing. It made me feel like he, I was like, he must see me as like a dog, like, like a dog's intelligence, right? Because he's so, so smart. And we'd always say the term in Sonos that John lives in a fully formed future, right? He, John could see the, the future. And um, he used to talk through his videos. Uh, I don't want to go too much into it because I really obviously <laughs> admire this guy that he, he would talk on um, about I mean, he made Sonos before there was such thing as MP3s. And he, he's, there's videos, like really old videos on YouTube and you could find and stuff where he's talking about the future and everything he said is right. This is how it's going to be. It's going to be like smart homes. It's going to be this. It's going to be integrated, you know? And it's just like, and you can look back because so many people are like, yeah, whatever. And then they say, oh, well, if somebody knew the future, then they would be like super rich. I'm like, yeah, he's super rich. Like he knows the future, you know? So anyway, it's very, super very humble cool. guy, super humble guy, laid back and everything he touches turns to gold. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we say. Yeah. 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 Mid <laughs> the Midas touch. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's um, cool. That's yeah. super cool. Interesting. So how did you find that? So you moved from Santa Barbara um, and mm -hmm. why the move to, 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 to Texas or? Yeah, I was in Ojai after that, okay. and um, that's when I did some big creating, create, uh, uh, writing books and um, getting more into plant spirit medicine and plant medicine and growing, and then um, moved to Austin. It was like 17 years I was complete with my time um, in Santa Barbara, and then I moved to be closer to family uh, here in Austin and a few a few months later, my dad passed away. Um, so it was really a divine time that I came here. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. That's sad. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> yeah. It was a super healing process. So I feel like that was um, just the perfect timing. And I was listening to myself in my move here, even though I said, universe, it doesn't make sense why I'm in Texas <laughs> at all. <laughs> um, but now it makes complete sense. <laughs> yeah. Look, I, I want to say, uh, pay you a quick compliment. You always seem, and I know we don't have this long standing relationship, but everything I see with you is so inspired and you feel like you 
surrounded yourself with so much joy you have so much joy in you right oh. and and it's it's nice it's like it's amazing to see you just like have a very good energy to you and yeah. I wanted to talk to you about these cool things like how you got inspired like I wanted to ask you about hooping it up and how you got inspired to, wow. to, to do that yeah well, I started an internet retail um, shop, and that's how I launched my own entrepreneur life in 2006. It was called De-Stress Essentials. <laughs> it was a home spa product. So I've been spending a lot of time behind the computer, and then, um, I don't know, I just, maybe I saw somebody hooping, I'm not sure, but I started um, a, my, a hoop group. I started a meetup, because um, I wanted to hula hoop with other people. It was just so fun. It was just to get myself off of the computer. And then I started doing um, hula hoop um, demos for uh, wellness places at univer the university was nearby for their, for their um, wellness program. And I started just um, hula hooping and that group is still running t today. And I met my husband here, who's also a hula hooper, <laughs> which was really odd. <laughs> Which is really odd. So you're in the vortex when you're hula hooping. That's a little secret. Mm, nice, well said. But so saying that term um, always reminds me of uh, Abraham Hicks. Are you a fan of uh, Esther and oh, Abraham yeah. Hicks? Definitely, definitely. How could you be not on this path without having some experience with them? Essential, essential reading, yeah. Essential knowledge, essential reading. Essential. I, I watched yeah. like, I think, Wow, at least a hundred videos. There's like on YouTube, there's like animated videos of. Uh -huh. uh, so it's like Esther Hicks, um, and it's just like this this somebody using um, like just these kind of cool kind of animations, and they're all about ten to fourteen minutes long. And it's from her mm -hmm. talks. Really, really amazing. So if you ever want to check check those out, I just they're so addictive. I, I was watching like one or two a day for months. Just just and of course I've asked and it is given. What an amazing book. Oh, yeah. Well, I went through my own obsessive phase with Abraham Hicks, you know, and they, they, they really helped launch, you know, before Ayurveda launched me into the whole um, self development, um, spirituality, uh, vortex world. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's great. That's amazing. Yes. And hula hooping gets you in the yeah. vortex. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great statement. I love it. And mm -hmm. while, we're, while we're talking about books, why don't you tell us about your book um, that you wrote, books? Yeah, I wrote um, <clears throat> art, um, the, art of, uh, the Art of Retreat. I wrote that in Ojai and some self-healing books and heal your trauma um, based on my own life and experience um, going on retreats and healing um, trauma and um, healing in my life and how plants have helped me um, to heal my life, heal my fibromyalgia, heal my body um, and how retreats of all sorts, silent retreats, meditation retreats, aromatherapy retreats, religious, spiritual retreats, yoga retreats, <laughs> all kinds of retreats have helped me in my life to just pause and slow down because I I, I, I could speed up, you know, and um, retreats have helped me. And so it was really a guidebook to help others give permission to pause, to take pause in their life and see where the redirection needs to happen. Mm -hmm. That's, that's wonderful. There's a, there's a, yeah. very, a very good friend of mine and he's, he's very successful, very wise, very humble. And he he does that no matter what happens, he'll go and he'll go for these retreats and he could be in the middle. He does commercial real estate. So he could be in the middle of like a really big deals and big things. It doesn't matter. He's like, it'll take like three days and he'll go to these meditation retreats and go to these things. And what he, he described it super well to me and said, I'm at this high vibration when I'm at these retreats and I'm at my true self or like in, in alignment with myself, with love in harmony. And, and he goes, but I, you know, cause we're in a 3d world, I got to go and I got to feed, make, make money for my family and this kind of stuff. Right. So he goes, so I'll go back and I, I see it kind of like 
kind of gave me an analogy of like going underwater. So like, okay, he goes like, I go underwater. Oh yeah. Right. And then he goes, but there's only so long. And he goes, I won't let myself ever get lost. So it doesn't matter the amount of money that's sitting on the table. He's like, I'm, I'm going up for air to find, to make sure he's always back to balance. It's wow. really, 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 really cool. A wonderful, wonderful guy. Oh, I love that analogy. That is so right. It's, it's coming back to our, we're going inward in the retreats. I know that and there's so many reasons why retreat, but you have got to re have a reason to retreat. Otherwise it's a vacation. And that that's why I wrote this guidebook because um, there's an inner purpose in this, in, in these retreats. It's actually allowing the noise to diminish so that you could listen to your voice again and you can start sourcing. And one of the reasons why I went on solid retreats is also to continue to stop and so I could source more of me, to connect to source and to connect to more of my unique gifts and abilities and to remember that. So not looking outside for any competition or comparison, because that's when I struggle, when I keep, you know, I look around. So retreats help me to just look at myself and my abilities and then all the unique ideas and and then it's a package it <laughs> and you package it it's just <laughs> it's a, a great time to source unique ideas yeah and and i think that's that's a great quote that i wish everyone could really spend time uh to realize is that we're all we're all individuals and it should never compare it's not a competition there's always i always say there's one competition going on it's with yourself to be a better version of yourself. That's all it is, right? Not with anyone else. This person could have this, drive that, own that, be in this relationship. It doesn't matter. That's not what's irrelevant, right? It's about your own journey, your own path. And everyone has to be like the best versions, right, of themselves. And I think that's that's you know very important. And I wanted to ask you though, what would what would you advise people now in the unfortunate um, COVID situation that we're in and that they can't go now, they can't go to those retreats. What, what, what's, what's a good, what's something they could do instead? Do it at home. <laughs> it's a perfect time to do it at home. And I actually created, um, and the brother is actually in uh, Southern California. It was the retreat center. I forgot what the retreat center, it's not Deer Park. It's the sister, it's the sister community in Southern California. And the brothers gifted me. I spent some time in their monastery a retreat. So in that um, book is a retreat that you can do at home and how to structure your ret retreat at home um, so that you can be silent. So you can um, still live day to day, but also create a retreat experience in your home for you know 30 days. Um, two weeks or five days, you can really structure it and they give us a, a guide in, to do that. We're in a perfect place to create a retreat in our home. Perfect. We don't need to go far actually um, at all to create a retreat. Home is a perfect retreat. You can create a retreat in a garden. Okay, that's awesome. I never thought of it that way. Um, I would. Yeah. So on that note, <laughs> where, where, where would people be able to purchase this book like from your website from Amazon where would be the best place to get it I have a shop online square shop that I have these books I also just give them away <laughs> honestly too because I think most people we just need to pause I just give it away to private clients okay cool so um, maybe after what I would like to do is, you know, always is to conclude all like the links to like your website okay. or your Facebook or whatever you want so that people can reach out to you. And, okay. you know, because there's so many, I mean, there's, you've given already so many reasons why somebody might, you know, want to talk to you and mm -hmm. that you can help them. And that's, that's cool too. Cause I always see that some, I believe strongly in coaching. I've said this many times that you can't do it all on yourself by yourself because uh, many times they say it's like you're inside of a bottle trying to read the label you just can't do it so you mm -hmm. got to kind of like you know have somebody else to help you through it and I think that mm -hmm. that's that's very important um, and then you know having those things like a, a, alone time is almost a lost in our society I find it's lost like I you know see people and it's not it's not it's zero blame 
it's just that with someone that nor in a, in a I won't say normal but in a situation where there's a mother father and there's kids and then there's work that's work is no longer 40 hours it's 50 60 70 hours of work mm-hmm. I notice a lot of people that I know around me and say well when do you and I try to encourage them I always tell them this I said go to your calendar and block off like an hour and for you like for your time so like in the future so say like let's say today we're November 4th or something 5th Fifth. Fifth. Okay. Who knows? Who cares? So yeah. So like, <laughs> I would say like you know you you go to your calendar and let's say you know mark off a date like December fourth. I'm going to put one hour here and it's going to be let's say for you it would be Maria Maria time blocked off. Now no matter what, no matter what client, no matter what happens, it's the most important meeting that you could have possibly mm-hmm. have, and it's with yourself. Right. So if somebody calls you back in your schedule. No, I, I can't do it. They can't do it between, you know, 12 and one or one and two on the fourth because I'm booked. And you don't have to tell yeah. anybody why you're booked or what yeah. you're booked doing. You don't say it to anyone, but that's your time. And then when that happens, you can either choose to just meditate, just, you know, think, just whatever it is, just listen to some like nice music, just whatever it might be, paint, anything you want. But it's just, it's a, it's a time for you to spend with you. And I think that that's really a lost in our society here, especially in the- you know, It surely is. Yes. But I think uh, even um, a step down uh, up from that is knowing, uh, you, you were being making the decision to commit to yourself. So making the decision to realize what are your values? You know, so you could parse out this time, but if you don't have that system, that navigation of like what, what do you value? Like three things that you value about your life right now in this time. What are the values? And so knowing that, that'll help to redirect and inspire you to take care of yourself. So if I value to be able to be able to show up with you full, present, and um, full of vitality so I can give the best of myself to you, then um, I will want to carve out that time so that I could not be irritable, <laughs> so I could not do it with resentment as like another thing, but to do it from a place of love, um, complete presence and complete service to what um, we're um, accomplishing here for the greater good. And so I, 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 I find that is more uh, empowering to scar- carve out that hour um, also and I follow the schedule with the planets, um, planetary energies, so that I um, schedule Mondays, moon days as my self-care day. So I don't push hard at all on Mondays. Work week actually starts on a Tuesday. (laughs) Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I go hard. Fridays are Venus days. Um, I give something to a woman or I do something to my, with my women's group. I have a beauty group, um, uh, Ayurvedic beauty group, and I, do something there or give a facial technique or something or go visit my mother or go to my neighbor who's a woman. It's it's about the feminine energy and it will elevate my own Venus energy by doing that, but it feels good. And then Saturday and then Sunday. So that's, that's the rhythm that I take and I don't burn out since I've adopted that schedule. Mm. That's great. It's great that you found something that works for you and that brings you balance and it's also you know filled with um compassion for yourself and for others so i could see why why it would work sounds sounds good sounds solid (laughs) 